Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jared, and this is my channel, Mazda B3K. In this video, we're going to troubleshoot why my one lonely interior light in my 95 Mazda Miata is not working. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, as this is a cloth top, as you can see, let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Still not much better, but it's a rag top. And uh, because of that, you don't have a dome light. There's not a light above the, the uh, rear view or anything like that. And best I can tell, there's not a light over here like there's supposed to be. I don't know why. So I have one lonely light here on the passenger side. As you can see it has a three-way switch. We have an on, a door, and an off. So right now it should be lit up. And it ain't. So let's try to figure out why. So step one is going to be take a screwdriver. Oh, oh, that's all light. Pop this out. Like so. Then we can get at the guts. So we may just have a loose bulb here. The fact that it flickered tells me that we do have a probably a good bulb and b that our door switch is okay so that's cool so why are we not hmm oh, oh, oh. look at that shortest video ever we have loose contacts on the bulb let me dig in a little further and see if there's something I can clean up. Okay, as you can see, I kind of escalated stuff. I uh, dropped the glove box, and that's pretty easy to do. You just squeeze it inward. Squeeze that tab inward enough to get it out of the way. And then I came over to this one, did the same thing, let it drop down. That led me to that connector you see there. Notice there's nothing plugged in because I got the other end. So this is the whole um, light assembly. Now you'll notice that someone put a scotch lock on this. The wire leads to nowhere. This is probably part of the security system that the previous owner had installed. I bet they wanted 12 volts when the door opened. And so the way they got it is they tapped the hotline for door. So when the switch was in the door position, it would run power to this line. And then the other end, looks like it snipped, but the other end went somewhere to something. I may have already cut it because there's a bunch of wire I pulled out from under the dash and there's a bunch of wire I pulled out of the engine bay that all went to the security system. It was installed, then it was disabled, and they left all the crap in. So, yay. I have to work on that. Now, the one thing I did want to show you real quick is see how the bulb holder there is kinked? That's probably the source of our issues. I'm going to see if I can't take some pliers, straighten that back out. Uh, the solders over here look okay. I don't like that wire's exposed right there. I'll probably blob a little bit of uh, liquid electrical tape on it. But I'm going to take this stinking scotch lock off. <sighs> oh, buddy. Every time I turn around, I'm running into dumb dumb stuff that was left behind it's like for example the horn doesn't work that's going to be another video and i suspect it's something like this where wiring got messed with and original connectors were removed and all sorts of junk like that so to remove a scotch lock it's like a big l clip if i had two hands i could do it it's a big l clip and you can see it right there you just get it off 
unfold the clip and then we'll pull out the wire that was added here this purple uh, this brown dude and then where the terminal got pierced where the wire got pierced by the scotch lock I'll get some liquid electrical tape and I'll patch that up and then I'll plug it all back in and I suspect that we will be good to go let's see how the inside of one of these works basically what it does is it cuts insulation it kind of guillotines it focus there we go it guillotines it and it shares that guillotine terminal with the other wire you're trying to splice in so it'll pass power so we got to pull that out and then make repairs and then see if our light still works all right show you how this works so this is some generic i think i got it ace small chain hardware store I'm sure there's better brands out there anyway shake this stuff up you kind of mix it up it is super gloppy so you're gonna take most of your excess off and then i'm gonna dab it in my case i glop it but we're gonna glop around the exposed wire so we got some right there we need to glop some right there yeah that's a little better there we go big glop yeah and that's not really going to hurt anything so then we put the cap back in like that. We'll take our thumb and clean up that little bit. Got on the plastic right there. Then we're going to set it down and we wait about 10 minutes. And then we can put on another coat and then another coat, another coat. We'll glop it two, three times. It'll form a rubberized coating. And then we'll put the bulb back in and we'll get everything plugged back in and we'll see. How this turns out i for one would be very happy to have at least one working light when you open the door on this thing at night i, I still don't know why there's not a driver's side light hey someone in the comments below tell me why that is it's a 95 and based on every diagram i can find there should be a light just like this one on the driver's side but i don't see it so someone educate me Alrighty, so I have finished glopping. As you can see, a couple layers. Get my hand back here so it'll focus. Glopped a couple layers there. And I glopped a little bit there. Take care of that exposed wire. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting everything back together. Alright, so firstly, we got to pop this back off. Get it. It's a two-hand kind of gig. And you need to take this down so that you can actually get your hand back here. I'll show you that in a minute. But as for the actual uh, light and connector, you're going to want to thread it back through. And something I have read on Mazda forums is to throw a little bit more light down. Folks will install the assembly upside down like this. Um, I'm going to leave it right side up because I actually have no clue how much light it's going to throw in the first place. I guess before I do that, I'm going to put this bulb back in. So let's see here. I bent this in a little bit. I want to try not to bend that out too much. So it's a little easier to get this bulb in if you come in through the back. You can see.
That's not good. Let's pop the contact off. Hang on, I'm going to have to fix this somehow. Because I do not have a spare bulb. Okay, I've got it back in, and this is what I did. I bent this tab way out so I could get the bulb in, and only the tip was really in, and it was loose. And then I took my small jeweler's screwdriver, which I'll show you right here. This guy. It's not a very big tip. Focus. There it goes. And I bent that back just as hard as I could. So now bulb's not going anywhere. And I bet when I plug this guy back in, we shall have light. So let's see what happens. Put you guys down here. Whoa. There you go. That looks pretty good. This video is going to look a little bit rough. I am trying to use my tripod more so you guys can actually see me doing the work versus me fading away and magically the work is done. I'm trying to move away from that. So the, the housing should pop right back in, as you saw. And then we've got our two ends of our connector. Got to get those back together. It's keyed. It only goes one way, and I cannot see what the heck I'm doing. And we do not have a lot of cable. I'm going to have to do this by feel. Plan B. We're going to pop this back out. Like so. And we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and connect it first. I see. Actually. It wants to go like this. Tiny, fiddly. Bloody. <sighs> you guys probably can't see anything. Uh, this is annoying. Yeah, Mazda didn't give any slack on that side of the loom at all. There it goes. Uh-oh. Well, that stinks. I'm going to guess that this bulb is now shot. And that cap popped off. But there's one other way we can verify this. And what we're going to do is we'll go get... Okay, you probably just didn't see any of that because I'm having to use a spotlight here. But we're connected. And as you can see... We're not getting any light. I think we have a bad bulb. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go get my voltmeter. And we'll verify that indeed we're actually getting 12 volts down here. And uh, if we're getting 12 volts on door, that means we're fine. It's just we have a bad bulb. So I'm going to go get my meter. Good morning, everyone. Today is a new day. And where we left off was that I was trying to get this to light up. I'm trying to get this bulb in. And along the way, I popped the cap and broke the bulb. So, I have purchased 
Na, na, na. DE3022 LED bulbs. These are 28 millimeter, so they should pop in just fine. And we're going to make the light more better because early Miatas did not have a lot of interior lights, particularly if they were soft tops like this one. So the brighter we can make it, the better off we are. But what we also were trying to figure out was, hey, are we getting 12 volts in here to verify that, yep, we're connected, we made a good repair and everything. So that's what we're going to pick up. So I'm going to get you guys on the tripod, get you looking at the multimeter, and we're going to verify we've got 12 volts coming through here. All right, guys, hopefully you'll be able to see the meter after I stick probes in and everything. So we're going to get the bulb out first. That we're just gonna we are just gonna pop it out first. We're gonna break the plastic because that's really smart. Uh, okay. So as you can see, just as soon as I pop the bulb out, this little focus, this little cap came out. So this bulb is gone and I broke plastic because it's 30 years old and it doesn't want to be pushed around. So make sure your meter is set to DC when you go to do this. That's what car systems run on. Direct current, not alternating current. And we oh can I just touch here and here? Oh let's see where do I have the switch positioned? Oh I have it set to off. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, that's not encouraging. Oh, whoa, oh, wait, oh, whoa. There we go. So I don't know if you guys see the screen, but we are getting 12 volts to the contacts, so. Let's see. No, you guys cannot see the screen. Oh, I almost had it. There it is. So we're getting 12.5 volts, which means we actually have a pretty healthy battery as well. But what that means is our actual connectors are good. Our contacts are good. We're not having an issue of, which will happen a lot with these older Miatas where the contacts get oxidized and then you don't have good flow of electricity. So your bulbs don't work. That's not the case. The case is we had fiddly connection here at the bulb and then the bulb gave up and died because god knows how old it is so i'm going to open up these leds we're going to carefully get one in and make sure well we'll cover that in a second all right let's zoom in a little bit there we go all right we're going to try this um make sure you have this set to off i have read where people have tried doing this and then the, the heat sink which is this black part here Touches the wrong thing, causes a short, and then, boom, you blow your fuse. Let's not do that. Uh, the fact that it's 28 millimeter, that's kind of important. Uh, a lot of the 3022 bulbs are bigger, like 30 millimeter, and that's a little bit too big for these contacts. So then you got to bend them out, causes some issues. All right, so... We're going to make sure. So that's an on position. This is an off position. And we need the bulb facing this way. All right, this isn't going to work. We need to detach it. And... All right. Got it out. Let's try this again. This way, this also ensures that we are not going to accidentally fry something. So we can try to get this in. Let's see here. So we'll get that one in first. Probably going to need to bend this contact out a little bit. Which you can do. Remember, you got to bend it back though. There we are. And I just did all that off camera. 
Sorry about that, guys. So there we are. Notice that we've got clearance on the LED. When we turn this around, we see that the heat sink and everything are not contacting any other kind of metal. And that we've got a good solid connection on those tips. Let me see if I can bring that in where the contact is. Yeah. All right. So we will plug this in. We're going to see what kind of light we get. All right. So I got everything reconnected, but notice we do actually have some loose contacts because I can push and I can manipulate this a little bit. Now we got a good connection. And it is silly bright when the connection's good, but when I put the switch in any of its three positions, see like this is, that's supposed to be off. And then one of these should be door. And then one of these should be on. I'm not sure which is what, but in any case, we have a loose contact, so. What we're going to do, bring you in here. See that screw? See the copper band there? That's the contacts for our three part switch. We're going to lift that up. I'm going to take a look at the other side, see what we need to do, try to get that more firm so that as our switch moves into one of our three positions, that we're actually good to go. All right, let's take a look at what we got. So here's our screw side. That looks okay. Check this out. We got some wear marks. We've got some oxidation. So, let's the focus. There we go. We've got some oxidation there. We've got some wear marks that we can clean up. I think what I'll do is I'll take uh, one of my steel brushes, just kind of wipe that up, and then we will scrape the companion side the actual contacts on the switch itself to do that we'll have to take that back off but we'll uh clean those up so take a look here same deal you've got some wear marks you've got some oxidation see if we can't clean that up and then put it all back together and see if we get more consistent lighting all right guys after much fiddling i've got it reliable so i had to clean some of that oxidation off, scraped it with a steel brush and I had some contact cleaner. But the other thing I had to do and probably the more important thing was there was not enough pressure in this metal contact right here, pushing against the contacts with the various positions. So when you're holding the light like this, this is off. This is door. And that's just on. So I had to take this side right here and take my pliers and just force it down. So it made good contact with these positional contacts here. But now it's doing that. So I'm going to reinsert it right side up. I'm pretty happy. Oh. Ah. Pretty happy with how I had the bowl positioned and it's working really well. So I'm going to go ahead and thread this back through here, plug it back in, and then I'll put the lens back on it. I've got it floating around here, right there. Get the lens back on it and we'll do final testing. And if that works out, we're good. And then I can finally get this dash off my feet, this glove box. This has been really obnoxious, but. So what happens when you work in a really small car. And we have success. So this is on. And now this is door. Now the flicker there is not on its side. It is because the passenger door switch is flaky. I need to replace it or fix it. But see that's the door switch in. And then if I wiggle a little bit, that's the door switch out. So door is working, off. Now notice the door is closed, so door is off. Now we're on on. Cool. 
So now I finally have some lights. That was interesting. Finally have some lights for at night when I get in this thing because before none of them worked because the only one I had was this one. There's a lighting kit I intend to buy that inserts a light in this blank here. And the blank's missing, but it goes in over here. So I fully intend to get that, that kit so I have a little more light because my Miata did not come with a light over here. I just got this blank. So I might try to wire something in there if I can find something elegant. This is the cigarette lighter accessory port. I gotta fix that. It apparently blows fuses anytime you try to use it. And I suspect that some of that mess right there would be why. Anyway, we're good, people. Repair complete. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our interior light troubleshoot. We figured it out. We had a basically a bad bulb and a bad contact, so I'm happy to have that all work out. If you learned something, leave a comment. Please like, share, and subscribe. And remember... I make the mistakes so that you don't have to. I'll see you next time, guys.